let's talk about inheritance and polymorphism. All right, we found back in the once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about inheritance and polymorphism. Now, those are two very large words for two concepts that are really not that difficult to understand. So overall, inheritance just means that we have an inheritance structure of functionality, fields, and, th and things like that in in our classes and polymorphism just means that the same thing can be two different things we will see applications of this in a second the first idea though is that what is going to happen over here how are we going to show this well let's say that we have our dog class but we now think to ourselves well wait a second the cat enjoys out there probably want a cat class as well so what the normal thing would be right with your core knowledge you might be like well absolutely no worries i'm going to make a cat class and then you're like well but if you we're honest over here Really, it's almost the same thing, right? So we're just going to be like, you know what? I can just copy this over because, you know, the cat is also going to have a picture and a name and an age. That's all going to be fine. I can copy over the constructor over here and I'm just changing this to a cat over here. I don't need the number of cats necessarily, but there you go, right? And now I have a cat class. However, what we will see is that it's kind of weird, right? Because both classes, they, they share so many different things, right? They share the picture, the name, the age. It's almost all the same. So in this case, we can abstract that these two classes probably have something to do with each other, and they basically could have a super class. And that's what we're going to create now. So now we're going to create the class called Animal. So if I now make a new class and I'm call this Animal over here, this class will now have all of the shared functionality and fields, and that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the picture, the name, and the age. And I'm actually going to move all of those to the Animal over here, and then I'm also going to get the constructor because that's going to be the same thing. And I'm going to paste this in as well. And this is now going to be the animal constructor because for an animal, you don't need a picture, a name and an age. That's pretty good. Now for the animal, I actually want a couple of different things as well. I want a make sound method. So we're going to make a public void make sound method, which is just going to output them out print line. And it's going to do whatever animal sound because, well, the animal over here, basically, I don't know, an animal, like what sound does an animal make? Well, it depends on what animal, right? So in this case, we're just going to say whatever animal sound, and we'll see how we can change this for the dog and the cat in a second. I also want to make this a little bit simpler, so I'm going to make a display info method over here, which is just going to output basically the name, the age, and the image. I'm going to have the age right here. This is going to be age, years, and then this is the image, and it's going to be the picture over here. There you go. That's just going to make this a little bit easier. We can also have a public int get age over here because, of course, there's no other way to get the age of an animal. And there you go. That should be basically what we're going to need. I guess the birthday method as well. Why not? Public void birthday. And we can say age plus plus. There you go. And just for the sake of argument, let's actually also output this. Let's say name is celebrating their birthday. They turned. And then age. There you go. So now we have an animal class. However, how do we sort of connect this to the cat and the dog, right? And the dog still has stuff inside of here. Like, do we need all of this? No, actually, we don't. We can basically just delete it because now all of the different things that the dog was able to do, the animal can do as well. But how do we inherit this behavior? Well, we inherit this by going up at the top over here and saying public class dog extends the animal class over here. There you go. And that way, the dog will now extend the animal. Now, I have to hover over this, and you can see I have to create constructor matching super because in the animal class, there is no default constructor, right? Anytime we make an animal, we always have to supply a string picture, a string name, and an int age, and that is the same thing for the dog. So I have to create this constructor matching super, but you see that the same constructor here applies. And then we're calling this super keyword over here, and this super refers to the super class. So from the point of the dog, animal is its super class. We've talked about this previously in the theory on OOP, on object-oriented programming. So from the dog's perspective, right, from the class of the dog, animal is the super class. And from the animal class perspective, dog is one of its subclasses. And we're going to expand this because cat is also going to be one of its subclasses. So this will once again also extend the animal class over here. And we hover over this again, create constructor matching super, which is then going to get us the cat constructor over here as well. So that's pretty cool. And if I go back over here, you can see the only thing that doesn't exist now is the number of dogs. That's fine, though. We can get this out of here for the time being. That was just to show the static keyword. But the rest over here, as you can see, if I actually do this, you will see everything still works. Benji celebrating their birthday. They turned 10. So that all works. And the crazy thing about it is that, but you call, you know, a Benji is a dog, right? And we call get age, but get age is not even part of the dog class. It's part of the animal class. That's what makes inheritance so cool. 
because now I can just get a cat out here, right? So I can just say, hey, now I want a cat, you know, whiskers, and there's going to be a new cat over here. Let's say whiskers.jpg, and this is going to be whiskers, and let's say whiskers is five years old. There you go. Bam, I have a cat. E easy as that. Like, that's basically it. I can then say whiskers age, and instead of Jeremy, I can call whiskers age, and you will see it all works. There you go. Whiskers age five. Awesome. Why is this interesting? Why would this be a thing that we want to do? Well, let's uh, think about it like this, right? So let's say I want, I get some cat info out of here, right? So let's say I'm just going to print out some cat information and I say whiskers.displayInfo and then I also say whiskers.makeSound, right? What is going to happen? Well, the information is going to be probably displayed, right? But the sound that's going to be made is, so you can see, cat info is whiskers, five years old, whiskers, JPEG, and then whatever animal sound. That's not quite what I had in mind when I said, well, they should make a sound because that's that seems a little bit weird, right? The same thing goes if I were to duplicate this and I say dog info and I were to take Jeremy over here, right? Jeremy display information and Jeremy make a sound. Then what is going to happen is that, well, right here, the dog information is going to be Jeremy, seven years old, image Jeremy PNG. That's fine. But then whatever animal sound, that's not quite right. So how can we make it so that the, that the sound from the cat is going to be a meow and the... And the sound from the dog is going to be a wolf. Well, this is where polymorphism comes in. Polymorphism is one of those things that's pretty cool. So there's one thing that you can do, which is pretty cool, because both dogs and cats are animals. What I could do is I could say, well, instead of making this a dog over here, this is now an animal. So you can see Benji is now an animal. Everything still works totally fine. So even though the Benji variable right here is an animal data class, it can be a dog. And that's pretty cool because polymorphism just deals with all of that. So an animal reference basically pointing to an object that is of a different type. This can sometimes be pretty useful. You know, for example, you might have a list of animals and then you go through and because the animal class, right, has the make sound method, you can call the make sound method on everything. But because we're going to change this in a second, you'll see that that still is going to work. So if I make all of them animals, right, absolutely no worries. Everything still works. And I'm going to say, okay, now the cat should meow. How do we do this? Well, we can do this if you have a super class, right? So once again, Animal is the super class of the cat class, right? And it has a public method right here, right? Like this. Then I can override that method. So you can either do this by starting to type override. And you can see I could override the get age method, the birthday method, the display or the make sound method. You can also do this by typing the name of the method. And if I hit tab to autocomplete, you can see it basically gives me this add override annotation over here. That is not strictly necessary. However, it basically points to you saying, ah, okay, this is a method that is overridden from one of its superclasses. I say one of its superclasses because if animal had a superclass in and of itself, then you could also override from that. So that that just works all the way. However, one class can only have one super class. So you can only extend from one class. And then instead of calling the super make sound, which would be the same thing that we have in the animal, what we're going to do is we're going to just print out meow. And then we're going to do the same thing in the dog over here. So we're going to override the make sound method. I'm going to say system out print line. And I'm going to say woof. And now I run this and look at this. We get a meow right here and we get a woof right here, even though the make sound method that was called, right, was called on an animal class or an animal variable over here. It's still understood. No, no, no. Due to polymorphism, I'm going to use the most relevant method, which is always the one that is basically last overridden. And that's basically what polymorphism means. It basically means, you know, to take on different forms. So the method can take on a different form in its subclasses due to overriding it. And that makes it pretty flexible and extendable, basically. That is the general idea. So anytime you want to add another animal, well, you just override the make sound method. And then it's going to have a different behavior than what was previously added over here in the animal class. What I highly suggest you do is you go back and you just add another animal and you just try to do the exact same thing, right? Just just add any type of animal, extend the animal class for that, and then add a custom make sound method for it. And you can see that this is going to be fairly straightforward. And then basically you're almost halfway done to understanding inheritance and polymorphism. Of course, it can get a little more complicated, but this is the general idea. You can overwrite certain behavior from these super classes, and that's basically all that there is to it. And also, which is quite important, Inside of the subclasses, you have access to the fields. So if I type this, you can see I have access to name and picture right here. The fields over here from animal, but I do not have access to the age because that is private. And like we've learned, this is accessible only within its own class, while protected is available in subclasses and in the same package and then public, of course, anywhere. And that's already it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about interfaces and abstract classes. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.